He was in Hiroshima uh, with his family at the time, he was five or six years old. And what happened in the aftermath of uh, the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the, um, well, it's hard to describe. The, the nice thing about a graphic novel is that it can uh, show in text and in image at the same time um, how horrible life can be in a world. This one is particularly graphic um, and uh, illustrates um, the stupidity of mankind. Um, there is also another kid who survived a different kind of ordeal, which is Mariana Satrapi. She wrote a graphic novel called Persepolis. Uh, in which she describes how um, the Shah was uh, kicked out, ousted by uh, the Ayatollahs, and how the Ayatollahs took over her country, which uh, before then was indeed a dictatorship, but uh, what it was turned into was ten times more horrible. Um, this particular scene describing how uh, before she was free and she could wander around just like being uh, a young girl and then suddenly the veil comes and it's like a hood is thrown over her childhood. Then there is uh, another graphic novel that have been made, uh, several graphic novels about uh, the genocide in Rwanda between the Houthis and the Tutsis. And uh, this is one for Mzungu, which means uh, it's a scolding word for uh, international aid worker in Rwanda. It's written by a Belgian uh, comic, or born and written by a Belgian comic artist called Jeroen Jansen, who was there as an aid worker and wrote down what he saw. Uh, the, uh, different ways of uh, of telling a story. You can uh, do it in a film, as we saw in the last lecture. You can write about it in a book. Uh, you can do it in just drawings, uh, and you can combine the two. Uh, I prefer the combination of the two because you, uh, uh, through the image, you see what is actually going on, and through the dialogue. Uh, you get the personal accounts of people that were there at that moment. Um, there's another way of uh, making uh, a graphic novel about war and genocide, uh, and that's the journalistic way. Uh, Joe Sacco is a journalist and a graphic novelist, and as a journalist, he traveled uh, to the former Yugoslavia uh, to cover uh, the war in Bosnia and um, he, um, he actually went around and asked people if they could tell about uh, what had happened uh, in their own uh, opinion in, in the history and uh, together with journalistic accounts that he himself wrote down he created uh, his graphic novels. He wrote several of them. This one is about Jumarjnev. He also did one about Palestine. And he did one about the Great War, the First World War, which is actually a, a non-narrative uh, drawing, which is about as long as this table. Uh, if you start at the beginning, you see the preparations of war, the bringing in of the troops and the logistics of the, the cannons and everything. And as it progresses over the table, it goes through the years of the First World War with the gassing and all the horrible stuff. And it ends up with the Armistice Day in 1918. It's a very interesting way, a, a very interesting approach to uh, well, you could say war is a genocide, but then it's orchestrated. Then uh, there is a book called K 
Krauss, is also a graphic novel written uh, and drawn by an artist called Peter Pontiac, a Dutch uh, uh, comic artist. And it's the story about his dad. His dad was uh, in the Waffen SS, the Dutch Legion, and uh, his dad worked uh, as a journalist. So he filmed uh, actual fighting at the front. Maybe he also filmed what happened elsewhere. We will never know because he took it to his grave. And uh, part of the, the book is about um, the doubt his father had whether he would join the Waffen SS or he wanted to fight with the communists. He, he wasn't made up in his mind clearly about which way to follow. In the end, he joined the Waffen SS. And after the war, he didn't want to talk about it with his kids, and he committed suicide uh, on uh, uh, Dutch colonial island. Then there is, uh, you could say, uh, Kraut, Pat Peter Pontiac, uh, myself, even Art Spiegelman, and uh, René Tardy, uh, actually Jacques Tardy, are all second generation uh, kids who did not actually uh, participate in the war or anything, but uh, through uh, inquisitive questions tried to pry open how the individual, uh, um, the individual uh, experience of the war was for uh, their family members. Um, the father uh, of Jacques Tardy was uh, a tank commander in the first months of the Blitzkrieg. Um, these tanks were very small. They were, I think, half the table. And there were like three people in a tank. And the tanks had a maybe 30 millimeter shell uh, as opposed to the German Tiger tanks with 75 millimeter shells. So these tanks would just explode. Um, Fortunately, the father of Jacques Tardy survived, and uh, the rest of his graphic novel is about the imprisonment of uh, his father in a German prison camp called Stalag to Um Also, pretty horrible, still not a genocide. But then, who's counting? Because now, in our present day, with what went on in the east of the Ukraine, this is a, a personal tale of an artist, who, a comic artist, who made caricatures of the, the Russian separatist Ukraine people. And he was uh, captured by them and tortured. And uh, in his drawings, with tiny little narrative, he tells the story how he was treated and how finally he was let go. So, here he's making uh, the comics. Uh, there they beat him up. Here they have a fake execution. It's very popular nowadays to fake execute people. Um, there they uh, beat him up again. They have another fake execution. Um, they uh, uh, interrogate him. They torture him, pulling out various parts of his body. Uh, and at some point uh, they have to, like, uh, in every war, people are humiliated by taking the toothbrush and having to clean the, the city square. He was doing the same thing only maybe two years ago. Then there's a whole different type of narrative in graphic novels, and that's called animation film. Uh, this is Walter Bashir, which is uh